Hi, I'm John Hibbert, Digital Analyst. Today I'm going to talk to you about three ways custom campaign tagging can destroy your data in Google Analytics. I'm going to introduce to you custom campaign tagging. I know a lot of you know what this is already, but I'm going to go through it so you, everyone completely understands it. And then we're going to look at the three ways, and then we're going to also look at how we can fix these, these three issues that, that pose a threat to your data attribution in Google Analytics. So what is custom campaign tagging? It's just a link that you put into your marketing collateral that lets you track users who click that link back to your website. So let's look at how that link is composed. You start with source, UTM source. Let's imagine that we're tagging a link for Facebook. That source will be facebook.com. Next, you add a medium. This describes the marketing channel. So this is going to be paid social in this instance. Your third one is your campaign. And that's just details of the campaign that you're tagging up. There's also a couple of additional ones that you may or may not know about. Term, often used by the paid search team. This is for your keywords. And content. This is less well known. This is just a free hit. You can basically include whatever you want in here. So it's a great way of adding more description to your campaign tag, for example, targeting or creative information. So let's get into how you can destroy your, your uh, data attribution in GA. So we're going to have a look at some of the well-known marketing channels that we use. And we're going to consider what happens if we just do nothing. We just don't use custom campaign tagging. So in Google AdWords, I think you can see that organic search isn't a great description for that. <laughs> It'll come through as paid search when you, when you tag it properly. And for Facebook ads, if it's coming from an app, it will be a direct. Um, it will be referred to as direct. Um, elsewhere, it will be referred to as social. Well, that's not great if you're trying to separate your paid from your organic. And what about um, your PDFs? So those, those PDFs that Creative have lovingly worked on, put the links into, they're just going to come back as direct. And really what you want to see is PDF. An affiliate will just be a referral. You'll have, you'll have no visibility of that. Now what about the second thing? Tagging internal links. It doesn't happen too often, but you never want to tag internal links. You only ever want to tag external links. So let's imagine we want to see the future. We want to know what the football results are. We're going to use tarot cards to do this. <laughs> okay. So I've typed in tarot cards into um, Google Search, and I've come through to this lovely site. It's well presented. It's beautifully designed. It's got a lovely call to action to register in, in it. I'm drawn to it, and I click on it. Unfortunately, we've got campaign tagging on that link. So what? So what does that mean? Well, first of all, it means that your session, your original session will end and a new session will start. So that's two sessions. That's not right, is it? <laughs> then you're going to get your source and medium overwritten. So you came in from Google, organic, and now you've got full challenge. OK, that's not great either. So we've <laughs> lost, our, lost sight of, of the marketing channel that brought us there. And finally, but most significantly, all our, all our conversion, all our event data and goal conversion data, revenue, everything is going to be attributed back to that campaign. And that, in, in effect, is a complete disaster. And this is not a, a relatively low traffic site. I understand this site gets a, quite a few sessions. Right, let's move into our third point. And this is about consistency. And this one is really prevalent. So you might not see um, the first two, but you'll certainly come across this. And here we've got like a source medium of Google CPC. Um, but we can also see that someone else has decided to call it Google PPC. And then another team have decided that they want to use mixed casing. <laughs> now, unfortunately, what that means is instead of having everything in one single line, it's all been split across three rows. And that is a data analyst's nightmare. And this, this, this happens more frequently than you think. And in our second example, so let's say we've got multiple teams working on the same campaign, Team A. They think that the date should go at the beginning. However, team B, they think the date should go at the end. Unfortunately, that just means we've got two rows. Data split again, big problem. So let's think about how we can get into fixing this. I like to have a process behind custom campaign tagging. And we're going to go into each of these elements and have a look how they work. Because if you follow this process, I'm certain that you're not going to get these issues. So let's look at planning. So I think it's really important that you consider that the naming conventions you're going to use, what kind of name types, the order that things are going to appear in those names. You also think about the mediums. Which marketing channels are you going to be using? Are you going to have PDFs? Are you going to have things that are not by default tracked in Google Analytics? 
and also your sources. So for example, is it Facebook or is it Facebook.com? It might not seem important at the time, but getting these nailed down is actually really critical when it comes to your data attribution in GA. And finally, is there, are there any changes that need to happen in the tool itself? So as a result of this planning process, you may come away and, and realize that you need to contact your data team and get them to help you out. So documenting the work, this is another critical issue. And again and again, it seems like no one's got a handle on what the naming convention should be. Um, no one seems to own it. There's differences between the, the agency tagging and there's, there's differences in how the client's tagging. So I recommend that a shared document is the way to go with this that includes lists of things like your mediums, includes lists of things like your sources, and basically it's owned by someone. So ownership's really critical and this should sit with the client, ideally. I'm not recommending they have a full-time person looking after custom campaign tagging, of course, <laughs> but it should definitely sit somewhere in their marketing team because someone needs to own it and boss this. Okay, so let's get into number three, consistency. Things that we see that critically damage your data attribution are not using auto tagging for, for like Bing in paid search, for example. Tagging internal links, like don't do that. You know, that is just like <laughs> gonna kill you. <laughs> uh, I know we laugh, but I've just shown you an example. That was a, a couple of days ago, right? And use lowercase text. I mean, like in terms of, of like the recommendations, there are loads, but of, those, of, of them all, these are the three that are really going to help you out. So in summary, you know, in this data-led age where more and more businesses are looking to their data to drive decision-making and derive ROI, you, know, you just can't ignore custom campaign tagging as an arbitrary thing that you do. You need to be all over it because you need to make sure that the data that's coming through in it is good. And if you don't, it has the real potential to make a total mess of your Google Analytics setup. Thank you very much.